Cowbells are out. Like it or not, sometimes you need more cowbell. Here's the tip of game three. Breadwinner gets it over to Radio. By the way, the debut of the 2019 Finals Court. We did not see it in the first two games. It is out and ready to go. And a turnover. Here's Bear, first possession with the team in green. Their season was over. They made a trade and everything turned around. Bear working against Udini right by him for the jam. Identical start to what you ended up seeing last time. Bear was in this exact same situation. Went straight to a five out, hit Udini with a behind the back move. And you have to remember too, in those past two games, Dini was doing an excellent job of bumping him and not allowing him to get those angles to drive to the rack or get any sort of Eurostep dunk going to the hole. Yeah, he was boxed for a moment, then come popping out with a big jam. Radiant. Boy, does he need a big game. Turn up. Step back. Can't hit the three and bear with the rebound. A lot of pressure on these locks. New Dini trying to stay in front of Bear. Got put on skates there. That's already know what you want to see. Hey, you remember too, we said it was a good job by Dini doing it last time, but it was also a team effort. They started bumping him to make sure he couldn't get to these spots. And so far, two Olay defenses, two quick, easy baskets as well. Radiant already on the cold ring. Goes down to Steves in the paint. He's got the mismatch. Smaller turn up. Nice score there by Steves. Just a smart way to recognize the mismatch. You see, he didn't do anything crafty. He didn't go for a drop step, nothing like that. He just immediately just held square, went up, relied on himself to make the contact lift because it's over the smaller defender. Four to two. Been a long day in New York. These players are ready for five of them to be crowned the champions. Here's Radiant on the move, the three, and he hits it. Running the pick and roll, that's something Dini and TDS aren't used to at all in the year. They're so used to centers or power forward sending those screens to where their communication has to be on another level. And we've seen some miscommunication coming in from those two specifically so far in the series. Radiant gets into the paint. And that was deflected. It'll stay with Philly. They'll have eight to shoot. Series tied at one apiece. It's turned into a three-game series. Fee steps in the passing lane, and he'll head to the line. Drew the foul on Steez, his first. Just good by Steez be able to get back. They just have to be more careful. We said how important rim protections are going to be in this series when you're looking at breadwinner and Feast. For those reasons exactly, they can get you some turn plays where they end up just getting a steal, and then you get some easy baskets on the other end. It was Miami and New York that faced off in the final last year. That was a best of three before the Knicks swept the heat. Neither of those teams made the playoffs. We actually only had two teams from season one that returned, and that's a big turnover. Second turnover of the game. Make it three now. Passing out a lot of the jump shots, too. I mean, if you're Radiant, you could probably get away with that, and the pass wound up going through. If you're ZDS, no chance. You might get lucky, and the ball just ends up staying in bounds, but that's about it. Jay Money now. Gets it out to Barry. You can hear the communication on the side of the Philly. Minnesota is a team, Dirk, that you certainly, you got to communicate because things like that happen. And he called it out. Steve's did perfect, saying 1-3, saying point guard and small four, saying that they're going to start to work out in the pick and roll. But again, it, it, this is just the exact same way that we saw game one. Bear just finishing down low, maybe hitting with you at three every now and then. But he sees the lane, and he just continues to attack it. He's got nine of their ten points. Radiant thought about the three. Shot clock starting to run down. Nudini in the corner. Gets it down to Steve's. That's a tough shot, and it's good. Steve's now with four points. It was Miami last year that beat the 76ers. 
He's become one of the favorite characters in the league. And now certainly he's backing up the talk here in the final. Been doing it all playoff long. Remember, they went on an 11-game winning streak. And there's Turner. His first bucket of the game. And such an easy backdoor. Brady just gets caught sleeping there for a split second. I think it was actually a turnover, so it's back way to the T-Wolves. Turn over to the backcourt. And that's the thing, you got all five guys sort of focusing on what Bear's doing. The next thing you know, you got guys going back to work. Finally get the stop. 12-7. Chant of defense from the T-Wolves crowd. They've stayed, stayed around. Some of the Sixers fans have fallen off a bit. But let them get a run. I think they'll be right back in it. And we got a timeout by the 76ers. That'll be their first in the ball game of the one. 17 to go. Hot start for both of the squads. Tied at a game apiece here in game three. Scott Colter along with him. 70 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Radiant steps back. Short on the jumper. And he thought about pulling the trigger again, but they'll set it up. They don't have much time. And I think he was looking for Steves. Didn't throw an icon pass there, and he'll turn it over. I think what he's been doing, JoJo's been dropping off the corner so much, so that time he tried to anticipate, hey, with Steve's getting a free roll, that corner might be wide open up, but JoJo did a good job of staying disciplined to the guy that was over there and got the easy steal. Turn up in the corner. Won't hit the shot, and CDS will come away with a rare rebound. Just a three-point game. Very bumpy here in the first quarter. Radiant. Goes across the double screen. Gets in the mid-range. CDS at the hash. Yes, sir. We're tied at 12. And finally, they were able to get that to go. Little double screen action. CDS ends up connecting. That forces the switch to Jay Money. And then Raiden is just able to break him down so well. That's what Bear the Beast has been doing all series long whenever he gets a switch on ZDS. And there's Turnup all alone underneath the basket. Tell you, don't let Turnup get to double digit points. That's not the way you want to find yourself down in the game that you're letting a pure lock just get some of the easiest passes. Final on seconds, and they give them a taste of their own medicine. CDS lurking around the hoop, and that's how the first quarter will come to an end. You wonder whether there be energy in the building after the long delay? I'd say that question has been answered. Tied at 14. Here at the end of one, at the start of the second, Scott Cole Jerk along with you, and hey, we saw some defense. And that first quarter. I mean, really just on both sides. I mean, only three attempts getting up for Radiant. Uh, definitely defense needs to improve a little bit more on the side of 76ers GC when it comes down to slowing down Bear. Here's Bear now. Getting into the paint. Lays it off for JoJo, and JoJo will just lay it in. Too easy. And regardless there, too, even if Nugini walls it up and creates some contact again, center on the lock. You take the bet on the center, making that every single time. Radiant now. Trying to get screen from Steves. Turn up staying right with him. Gives it over to ZDS, drops it off to Breadwinner. And yeah, it's three in the key. Out of sorts there on their first possession. Steve's probably just prepping, trying to get ready. Maybe he thought that first shot was going to end up going up for ZDS, and when he passed out of it, it was just too late at that point. Two-point lead for the T-Wolves. And Jay Money will draw the foul. A little reach there by ZDS. Jay Money coming over in the trade from Miami. Joined a team that was three and six. It certainly turned things around. They needed everything to get into the playoffs. And Jay Money just can't hit. And Money with a... Bunch of family in the crowd from Fort Worth, Texas. And ZDS will rim out. Here's Bear now. Working against Brad. That's a mismatch, but a nice recovery by Brad to get the block, and then they turn it over. Reset on the shot clock. 
Down to 15 now. Udini. And there's JoJo slipping by, and he can't get the and one, but he'll handle the line for two. I saw that always. Swing on a reset. I mean, they always just go straight to the slip for JoJo down low because a lot of people, they're expecting, hey, I want my point guard to get out of this tight scenario. So the center's going to hold the screen to be able to get him back maybe deeper towards the top of the arc so we can start to orchestrate the pick and roll. But how many times have you seen JoJo just slip it and just get a free two? 18-14. Haven't had many multi-possession leads yet. This went back and forth here in game three. Radiant now. Guarded by Jay Money. Jay Money trying to draw the charge real quick. But Radiant will step back, can't hit the three. Radiant just one of four. Certainly had struggled. Here in the final. Bear behind the back. CDS helps him out. Works him to pick up a dribble and get off to JoJo. And JoJo will take the free, line, free throw line jumper, no good. And there's a foul on Feast as he tries to blitz in. They're doing a really good job of any time that they try to get in down low, just playing the proper defense, not jumping it too much, forcing a lot of these missings and then getting the rebound. Jay Money. Ooh. And long rebound goes down to Steves. With Breadwinner up ahead. And Breadwinner will stop through the lane. And Radiant will hit it from the top of the key. See, I mean, it's always good in that scenario, too, just for Brad. You don't want to be in a situation where he's going to sit there and pull up from the wing. So he went down for the two, and you saw how much traffic he ended up bringing down. And turn up gambling on the steal is what left Radiant wide open for that mid range jumper. And Dini's guy just slapped the ground. Brad on a sharp rim. And Feast will hammer it down. Back to a four point game. See, that's what we talked about. You've seen a couple pass out shots coming in from the shot sharps in the game, but. When a point guard does it, especially when they're that close, it's usually a pass that ends up going through. Radiant's got to get it going. Only five points. He does have four assists in the game. But two of five from the field. And I'm surprised he didn't take that one. Udini able to chase it down. They'll only five to shoot. Get it off the radio. They try to reset. And it's Udini on the cut. His first bucket of the game. And they're just trading blows back and forth. There was an identical quarter number one, and now this one's only just separated by two. He had a couple options there. The paint was actually pretty clogged, so. Play active hands. They had a chance for the fast break. And it's foiled quickly by the T-Wolves. Radiant gets it off to Breadwinner. Goes to the baseline. Mid-range jumper, and it's good. We're tied at 20. But to say, I mean, you keep on trying to bomb these passes. It kept them getting tipped twice. And just go get it up into the half court and slow some things down. Bear now, under two minutes to go here in the first half of game three. Series tied at one, and that will be an and one. Again, another back door. This time, a lot of people who ever play the corners, whether you're at home, whether you're in the league, that decision of when you know to go back door and when you go front door. That time, Turnup got the perfect read, went front, and then Radiant couldn't get any sort of bump on him when he was going to the rack. And Radiant was trying to stand on that baseline so he wouldn't get backdoored. Ends up giving up the three-point play. That's the deficit right now, 23-20. 1.40 to go now. Radiant, six assists in the ball game. Someone's got to be open. Seas has got to get out of the paint. CDS will put it up. And somehow they get the offensive rebound, and ZDS tries it again. No, sir. See, that's even a forced one in that scenario where you could have just ended up getting something set up again. You got the bad catch. You're already holding square to try to get off your shot, and it ends up being contested. Here's Bear. JoJo. 25 to 20 now. 5-0 run by the team in green. See, it was smart there, too, for Rady not to even try to jump to get that block. And then that's when you risk the chance of getting a three-point play. Point guard trying to block the center. That never works. Well, T-Wolves now on the bonus is Feast. You can hear the chant of Feast in the crowd. He's now got four, and it makes them both. 
27-20, largest lead of the ball game for the T-Wolves. Final 48 seconds of the half. Steve just gets it across the timeline. Turnip doing a nice job against Radium. Shot clock running down once again. CDS mid range and it rattles home. That'll stop the run momentarily. T Wolves can't hold it for the final shot. Feels like an important possession. JoJo all alone. And he hits it. Just a two. It was a good pause there as well, because if he was to sit there and shoot that straight away, more than likely would have given him the load up. So just get a chance to set your feet. You take the shot, you're the taller guy as well when they're trying to get over there to contest you. I mean, those are ones that we've seen anybody, power forward, center, make on a consistent basis. Well, there's the foul to give with 11 seconds to go in the half. The deficit is seven for Philadelphia. They're in their first final as well. Here in their second season, CDS can't hit. And that's how the half will come to a close. Love 2K for, hey, you're not even playing, but you want to stick around and see what happens. Hey, anytime you get a chance to flaunt a ring, I think you always make an appearance. <laughs> There's Bear. Feast from the corner. Couldn't hit the wide open three, and then Turnup commits the foul. Turn up with a huge first half, seven points, and doing a nice job on radio. We'll have to see how much of an impact those seven points end up making as well. I mean, you, this comes down, I mean, it's a close game right now. With the seven points that Turnup has, which are all easy baskets, a three-point play mixed in there as well. If he didn't have those, you'd see seeing a tie ball game. Here's Radio. Over to ZDS. That rims out. Remember, it was Nate Call's defense last year that earned MVP honors. The defense matters, especially in the big time, but no one is stopping this guy. 11 points, six assists for Bear the Beast. See, it looked there for a second. It was that little turn right towards the end. That's what ended up setting him on the path. If he triggered that any earlier, it would have tried to pull him to like a spin jumper or something, and it would have to pick up his dribble, and they would have to get to a reset. Here's Radiant now. Top of the key, won't fall. Danger time for Philly. They find themselves down nine. And they get it, Jay Money. And he finger rolls it in. Timeout. Communication just has to be better in those situations. It's been all series long where Dini and ZDS have messed up when it comes down to who's getting ball, do we switch, what are we doing? Well, they're having some conversations on the other side, that's for sure. But Jay Money getting it done. That's his first bucket of the game. Just one for three, but Bear is going off. And you can see Radiant still in Struggleville. Two of six, one of four from downtown. This is going to be tough. I mean, the team that wins this game has a huge advantage to maybe closing this thing out in game four. Yeah, I mean, for Bear, I mean, sitting at 11, only missed two shots, one turnover, picked your perfect game. But something that we've highlighted all playoffs long is just how Bear gets everybody involved to the point where it's a, it, you get to the end of the game and almost one through five has double digits, which is just the perfect recipe to having any sort of success. Well, these are the players we've been watching really all playoff long, not just the finals. 11 points for Bear. That's the difference right now. And that's also the deficit that Philly's facing. And get it into CDS. It's T Wolves team. Everybody knows their role and plays it well. Bradian. Trying to get a screen from Steves. And they lob it up to the big fella that's blocked by Feast. Steve stays with it. New Dini. Back to Radiant. Someone's got to shoot the ball. CDS will. Such great ball movement. It was such great defense to counter it here. Zidini throws a pump fake to Radiant, then over to ZDS. Jay Money just one step away to his left to getting a contest on that it's shot. like a little Fifi almost over there. It's crazy. 12 points. Now for ZDS, Jay Money. And Bear, back of the rim. 
Again, probably one of those situations you get a bad catch and you're already holding square. That's how, just how quick he got that release off. I mean, mid-range net necessarily is the forte for the build that these point guards are on, that sharpshooting playmaker. I mean, they could still knock him down, but not at such a high rate. Like maybe somebody who's on that shot creating sharp wood. Bear will bring it up, another turnover. Turnover number 10 for Philly, and Rated almost took it away, and Steve says, get that shot out of here. If you're looking at the box score, that's the difference in the game. 10 turnovers for the 76ers, only three for the T-Wolves. And they turn it over again. Wow, there's just so many errors when it comes down to the passing lanes. A lot of force feeding down low. Maybe Radiant tries to hit him with the, the corner dot at one point in time, but then they stay disciplined, they stay home. And then right there in that situation, the screen's got to connect before you even end up making the pass. Jay Money just avoided it at the perfect time, played the middle, and it's just easy steals for him. Another turnover. Feast gives it to Jay Money. It's a long two, and it's good. The lead's 10. They're lucky right there that that didn't end up being a three. ZDS decides to go straight down instead of going all the way out to the corner. Jay Money could have easily, if he positioned himself right, knocked down a three. 2.36 to go. And if you can't tell, our commentary booth is on the T-Wolves side. And they're going bananas. Well, 19 to shoot after the deflection out of bounds by Steez. Turnovers are the difference. It's a plus 10 turnover differential right now for the T-Wolves. Watch for a JoJo slip right here on the screen if they end up going for it. That's something we've seen a lot of, again, in those same situations to where they get the inbound. It's one of the plays that they run pretty crafty. And there's JoJo all alone. Three, you betcha. 11 for JoJo now. That's what you get when you go to help. I mean, there, instead of just pulling the shot. Uh oh. And one! It's pandemonium here in New York. He forces the pump, if he gets it. Continuation goes all the way to the rack. Big two-handed slam. Steez did all of his best to try to force the miss there. 12 to 13 run here in the third quarter. 41-25. Steez now. Radiant on a cold ring. I feel like I've been saying that all series long. Nearly turned it over again. And Steez. <laughs> it is like it was about to get blocked. The way everything is going. And it's a game of runs. Turnup did a good job of showing. If he would have pressed the button, more than likely he would have ended up getting a steal there. But it's something you don't even want to risk. Trying to just bait it out. It just wasn't the right timing. Coming up on 90 seconds to go in the third. The lead is up to 14. Bear Euro! See, right there in that situation, that is one New Dini can definitely try to cut off. Anytime you usually get that Euro step animation, you can't get a dunk out of it, so then you're forced into a layup. But he could have easily just got right back in front. That's the one that Jeff Terrell sits there. He looks like he's about to have a panic attack or a heart attack, something, because those plays end up happening. You can see here, too, they've been going to ZDS a lot. Probably lightly contested, but good nonetheless. 13-point game. We'd love to get it down to single digits before the fourth quarter. Nudini has had a tough time staying in front of Bear. Oh, my goodness. He is living on skates right now, Nudini, as Bear elevation homes. He's been having a field day. Four missed shots total in a game for Bear to Beast. And a timeout by the 76ers with 38.4 to go here in the third. The lead is 15. You're going to see, I mean, that's the looks on their face. I mean, there's just been so much not going their way. They've been playing sloppy. We talk about the turnovers. That's one of the biggest issues for the team. But even just defensively, it's the same thing we saw in game number one. The Bear is replicating that to a team. And here you can see shooting breakdown. I said Jay Money's a guy to keep an eye on. Really haven't tried to get him involved all that much. Meanwhile, for CDS, they're getting a lot of mini dexes going for him, trying to get a lot of open looks for him down towards three. I mean, he needs to be having his games. If Radian is struggling the way that he is, CDS is usually a guy that ends up picking it up. This is the hottest team in the league. 
and they are proving it right now. Where would the Sixers be without CDS's 15? That's half their points. And it goes back to take away, turn up defenses, easy backdoor cuts for those seven points. I mean, you're looking at, I mean, it's still, there's still one quarter to go. You're only down by 15. Definitely doable to try to make some sort of comeback, especially if you can, I mean, I doubt it's not really realistic to try to cut it down to single digits with how much time you have left. But at least go into the fourth and then make that your key, but you got to be playing stellar. And again, defense, defense, defense. Well, the T-Wolves have 13 steals. They forced 15 turnovers here in game three. It has nothing to do with the shooting that we saw earlier in the series. That's all gone away. It's now decision making. Philly's got to wake up. Back out to ZDS, breadwinner. And he tra oh, three of the key. It looked like he traveled to begin with. Steve thought he might get the ball down there. I think that's what he was expecting on the pass back from either, I mean, straight away from Brad or straight away from ZDS. I think he was expecting it from ZDS, though. The lead is still 15. Final 10 seconds of the third. JoJo out to Bear. He's going to hold it for the final shot. Working against Nudini. And he had a dunk! That quarter was all T-Wolves. They take a 16 to 8 third quarter into the final six minutes. Scott Cole and Dirk, and they got to call time out there. That was about to be another turnover. Take the fucking ball. I'm going to come up, throw the fucking ball. Fuck. My bread. Fed up with the turnovers. Nine turnovers for Radiant, five for Steez. Hey, bro, stop. No, I'm tired of him doing it. Yeah, They're giving us facts because he doesn't listen. Stop. Don't hey, say he didn't hey. do something. Yo. Oh, we see Jeff Terrell hey, can I hear get in on it. Hey, if you want to get in, get in. Hey, can we can we change his name? To what? Tech winner. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be. That's my one of the night. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll let you have folks. one. What's my drum roll? Production. We'll let you. Uh, we'll, it's right, going to be here. a technical foul, right. by the way. Technical foul coming in to Breadwinner. Sportsman like conduct. You say a lot of words in this league, and there's a few of them that you can't say, and Turnup will step up. He'll hit the technical. That'll make the lead 16. A wild first three seconds here, the fourth. I mean, you can obviously just see, I mean, that's a mix of the delay. <laughs> Some maybe some small things that you've sat there and said, hey, this is something that we've worked on. Why are we making these mistakes? And then yep. it just gets the best of you. And you know, going, I mean, that's the first time I've ever seen somebody challenge Jeff in a game as well, which is it's pretty shocking. But I mean, it, when there's so much on the line here, that's the intensity and fire that it ends up bringing out from your players. It doesn't matter who it is. The lead 16. See if that'll fire up the troops here for Philly. And ZDS will take a three. Long rebound, Brad can't get to it. JoJo will secure it, he finds Feast up ahead. And smartly he'll back it out. I think if it was just Raiden, he would have gone up, but Steeds doing a nice job tracking back on defense. Seems like they're gonna have to have a, I mean, already just the way that the game flows. I mean, I know we say comebacks are always possible, but just T-Wolves just seem like they're in the driver's seat and they just seem so comfortable that I mean, you're not in a position to be like, hey, well, let's think of the next game when our backs are against the wall and it's elimination time. But I mean, it's, what do you, what do you always say, mom's spaghetti time? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's way past mom's spaghetti time. Palms are certainly sweaty at this point. Turn up in the corner. And that's an air ball. Had to force it up against the shot clock. You just need to find some source of offense as well. And just look at the turnover, 16 to 5. And they turn it over again. 17 turnovers here in a final game. I told you many times, take care of the onion or I'll make you cry. And here's Steez. And just in the game, four steals for J Money, four steals for Feast, three for JoJo, three for Turnup. 
Yeah, it's a team effort. The team defense has been fantastic. ZDS out to Radiant now. 18-point game, shot clock running down. ZDS has got to put it up. Can they get the rebound? They will. Brett with a nice pass. Eight on the shot clock. Radiant to ZDS to Steez, and it won't go. Are you kidding me? Radiant. And it's knocked away for a moment. Let's check it with Alex. Yeah, Scott, tensions are extremely high right now on the 76ers side. Obviously, Brad with the tech. Coach Jeff Terrell was just screaming at him. He's almost without a voice, and that's something that this coach needs, so he's going to have to you know, keep his guys in check and keep his voice in check as well. They also mentioned they keep screaming back and forth to each other, saying Bear can only go to his right. He can only go to his right. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I'll throw it back up to you. But certainly. He likes to work that right side of the court. And there it is again, right on cue. It's time they find Feast. Feast all alone. It passes up on a wide open three. Up ahead of ZDS. He'll pull the trigger. Smart decision by ZDS. Yeah, I mean, you have so much space. I mean, you can't even argue that. Even if he misses a shot, it's still a smart shot, especially in a scenario where you need to try to get any sort of points. I mean, we see so many shot sharps who are confident when pulling up in transition exactly like that. JoJo gives it off to Bear. Top of the key. And you got to shade him that way. And he'll split the defenders and say, how about I go left? And that's exactly what they did, too. They forced him over towards the left. But same thing. Even if he wanted to get the Euro step that way, he's going to. You give him any sort of a lane, he's going to go up with it. You have to try to create some sort of contact before. Otherwise, he's just going to get a dunk each time. Dini's going to have to get bumpy for them to have a chance in this series. It looks like. If this score holds up, they're going to be down two to one with the T-Wolves having a chance to clinch in game four. Timeout T-Wolves, 3-11 to go. They got three remaining 76ers with only one timeout the rest of the way. They need a miracle to get back into this one. And it could have just been fixed so earlier towards the game, just take care of the ball. I mean, look at that, 17 turnovers. You've got yourself in some foul trouble, but that really hasn't been that much of a difference maker. We talk about without ZDS right now, where is this at? Well, it's a flood just like it was in game number one. That's where it would, we would end up standing. On the defensive end, this is on Udini. On the offensive end, Radiant, you can't turn the ball over nine times. You just can't have it happen. And five points ain't gonna get it done. So maybe you gotta tip your cap a little bit to turn up. Causing all these turnovers. I know he doesn't have a lot of the steals, but he's getting real bumpy. Well, that's what it always works out with, both the lockdown and then feast, and also just some more communication of, of picking and choosing of when they want to drop down to try to intercept the pass. And that's why you do see just a combine between feast and turn up, the two guys that are in the pick and roll defense with seven steals in the game. I mean, that's almost right up there with how many turnovers Radiant has. 50 to 33. Scott Cole Dirk with you for game three. CDS on an easy one. He's had a great game, 20 points. He's had to. They're just going so much off ball. I mean, this could be for many things. Radiant not able to get much going offensively when he's trying to work out. So he could just be trying to build up some takeover as well, just so he can get the little stat boost onto his character, and then he could try to attack. But that's why when he's been forcing so many of these passes, he's almost being reset when he ends up losing the ball or it gets a turnover. And you see how much that does affect your takeover in the long haul of the game. 50 to 35. Well, I'm heading to Paris tomorrow, but I've seen a lot of Euro coming in from Bear. It's the go-to move. I mean, people in chat are even like, hey, how do I do that move? <laughs> Someone tell me how it's, to do that move. It's, it's OP. You, it's one of my favorite moves to do, and we saw a lot of big men do it in towards the early part of the year, but there aren't a whole lot of people who like to utilize it. I mean, Bear's one of the ones at point guard who does every single time, and CDS has his badge. Again, if you can play some defense here and start getting something going in the offensive end with this badge blazing, you're fine, but it's... They can't stop him. They cannot stop Bear the Beast. He's got 21. Ole defense is an understatement. I don't know what that is. That's not even Ole. That's like saying, my door is wide open. Come steal all my stuff from my house. Like, that's how open this is. You have a sign, a picket fence in the yard that says, hey, come to the paint. Well, Radiant finally gets in there. Just seven points for Radiant. He's going to have to have a monster game for. And Brent, nice job with the blitz. CDS will pull the trigger because he's got the badge. And they need threes. Radiant back to ZDS. 
Needs a screen. They give it to Steves. Back to ZDS again. How does he get that wide open? 11 point game. So that comes to down towards it in 11, but where you have one badge that's working for you in ZDS, you got another badge that's going on the other side. And they got a steal on the inbound. Little embers left for ZDS. And his badge has to bleed, and Steves will take the easy one. Three possession game now, 125 to go. We've seen the T-Wolves collapse before, but that was a long time ago. And you see how much inbound pressure you can see there to start to send bodies flying over towards Bear, trying to get any sort of steal, making sure that they can burn as much of the badge away, but just trying to force it, get down into that shot clock, get it as down far as possible, force Bear to work in crunch time. That may be the way they got to play in game four. Just chaos. Oh, and a radiant, it's a turnover. They could have came down and cut it to a two possession game, and they give it away. Turnover number 18 of the night. See, that's one of the tough parts, that like you run the pure glass for that reason, so you can just keep on bombing these leak out passes. I mean, Radiant was open there, but there's always something about when you're running just straight at the top of the arc down towards the paint, the pass is more likely to go through than it is if you end up trying to cut towards the wing or the corner. It always seems like there's something wrong and it doesn't go your way. 54, 45. Had a long delay earlier. It's been worth it. This has been wild. ZDS got to pull the three. Oh. Off balance, never can set his feet. Two bad possessions for Philly. He just needed to stop and then pop. And they're in a situation too to where it looked like they were going to end up trying to make some sort of comeback. I mean, we're 42. That was two possessions. Yeah. And now Bear will step to the stripe. He hits the first. I mean, what that one there for CDS. Hey, I mean, if you were to go back and probably watch it, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, there was somebody running to contest a shot, and the angle that he ended up catching the ball at, if he were to stop and set it, maybe he probably would have got lightly. I mean, that's an open shot, but it's just in, in those situations fading away. Yes, you are in the archetype to where you might be able to make it. Well, I, I, I don't want to bring this up, but for the delay of the original game three, the T-Wolves were up 10. Maybe it's only right that they hold on here by double figures if they score here. Feast will hold it in the corner, FIFA style. And then we got the horns, <laughs> we got the cowbells. Here's Bear, he's gonna dribble this out. And the T-Wolves are gonna win game three. They're gonna take a one game lead here in the series, ZDS played his heart out, but it's not enough. He scores 28 points, but they lose by nine.